right, let's circle back to the conversation about developments in Niger Republic as the country cuts ties with Nigeria, Togo, France, its colonizer, the United States. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis the developments here in Nigeria, as President Bolami Tudubu has sent a letter notifying the Nigerian Senate of the positions of ECOWAS to take military action against the military junta in Niger Republic. Uh, we have once again on the line Country Director of Care International Nigeria, Dr. Hussein Abdu. Doctor, Doctor, thank you very much for staying with us. Uh, we appreciate your commitment to the conversation. First of all, your thoughts on what looks like Sophie's choice, very undesirable outcomes, especially if you consider the military talk, the threats and the counter threats from ECOWAS as well as the military uh, junta in Niger Republic. What are your thoughts about how things are shaping up? Yeah, I, I, I think it's an unnecessary escalation that we were experiencing in the last few days. Yes, the coup in Niger is condemnable and should not be accepted in any way. But I do not actually think that you can restore democracy through a violent and non-democratic way. Um, uh, of course, uh, Niger is a very close neighbor of Nigeria. And I think the relationship beyond between Nigeria and Niger is not a relationship of two countries. I think it's more a relationship of brothers and sisters. A war against Niger is like a war against Nigeria itself. So, so uh, uh, for me, I, I think we have to tread this with caution. Uh, Niger is going through a very difficult period. Ordinarily, one of the poorest countries in the world, going through major crises as it relates to the Central Sahel, and now compounding that with a coup, but threatening to use military force to dislodge the, the copies in the moment, for me, is an escalation and should not be encouraged. Uh, Nigerians are already expressing, um, expressing opinions of different shades. Uh, we have had strong, two strong statements from the Council of Ulama, uh, from the Iowa Constitutive Forum. And I, and I think uh, those are strong statements uh, because the relationship that we have between the northern part of the country and the rest of Niger is a very historical one. And using force, for me at this moment, shouldn't be encouraged. There are other ways. I can, I can recognize that, look, we are putting pressure, government wants to put pressure on them, and that Nigeria is currently chairing the ECOWAS, and the president of Nigeria is the president or is the chair of ECOWAS. Yes, a lot of, there is a lot of expectation from the Nigerian side, but we need to tread this with caution. Historically, Nigerian foreign policy right. is right. driven largely by friendly relationship with its neighbors. Nigeria has never carried out historically against any of its neighboring countries, despite all provocations. Nigeria have always learned to let go when there is any contention with its neighbors, because it believes very strongly that its influence, its power, depends largely on the relationship it has with its neighbors. So getting out to Nigeria and using force, we undermine that historical relationship that Nigeria has had with its neighbors. And once you destroy the relationship with Niger, it's bound to affect the relationship with other neighbors because they'll begin to look at Nigeria right. with some level of suspicion. Right. Right. So we need to be the, the careful city, on how we march around this. Change. It's a tricky issue. It's a delicate one. This region is already in a huge security crisis and it should not be compounded by this particular situation. Yeah, uh, if I can chime in here, Doctor, what is your reading of the situation, especially how things are shaping up, looking like a proxy war, where Niger is trying to side with Russia, and the ECOWAS, as you can tell, uh, is leaning towards the body language of France, the United States, who are doubling down on their commitment to not just condemn, but to push ECOWAS into this military action. How real are those threats, and what are the chances that uh, things could escalate to a worst case scenario where we could see a possible military action? No, I, I don't really think there is a proxy war. Uh, I, I, I think um, sometimes we drop some of those things for strategic purposes. Uh, yes, in Niger, as in many Francophone countries in West Africa, there is a strong discontent in their relationship with France. And um, part of the coup, whether in Mali or the one in Burkina Faso or in Guinea, and now in Niger, has to do with some of the soaring relationship between this country and their former colonial overlord, France. And so you cannot talk about 
the politics of this region and the recent military activities around those areas without pointing at its relationship with France. But as it's going now, once you touch France, America has a very strong base in, in, in Niger. France has a very strong base in Niger and has a strong colonial control or neo-colonial control of the country. So as relationships are getting worse between this the, with the Western world, it is almost natural, considering what is happening now between Russia and Ukraine, it is natural that the other side would like to drop Russia or begin to demand for mercenaries, particularly that there are mercenary activities in, in Russia, mercenary activities in Mali and in Burkina. And therefore, since they are all in the same plate, then they would like to explore other means of strengthening themselves strategically. But I don't see it as a proxy war. Yes, the ECOWAS position may coincide with what France wanted. But that is why ECOWAS need to tread this softly so that it does not present itself as playing the new colonial game in this matter. And, and, and so to be strategic in this issue and be, let ECOWAS be clear about its interest and not bother about the interest of the other parts of the world. Democracy is about people and it's important to recognize that. I did ask earlier what you make of the threats and whether or not these threats of military action is real or is just a bluff to see who blinks first, especially on both sides, because uh, the Nigerian coup plotters or uh, current military junta is also threatening uh, military action because it is also enjoying not just the support of Russia or the Wagner Group or other uh, military juntas in Guinea-Bissau, Mali. It is also threatening to take action against uh, ECOWAS. But what, what about uh, cutting ties, for instance? We have had the ECOWAS delegation visit uh, Niger Republic. Uh, they didn't spend the night, so clearly things didn't go according to plan. Nigeria sent its own delegation, uh, led by the former military head of state, Abdul Salam Abubakar. That didn't pan out. Nothing much came out of it. And just this morning, uh, the military leadership in Niger announced cutting ties with virtually everybody that matters in this conversation. Where do we go from here? if we're not supposed to take the nuclear action, which is the military action, how do you diplomatically address this situation when uh, Niger is cutting ties with all the players involved? Diplomacy requires patience. Diplomacy does not mean that you go for one meeting and expect to make gains. You go and you prepare ground for subsequent engagement. Yes, we had the ECOWAS dele the, uh, delegation and we had a delegation from Nigeria, like you mentioned. But I think it will be foolhardy to expect that one meeting will give them all the result. I think it's around understanding the terrain, begin to create mutual trust. It will take a lot of troubleshooting to, 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 to arrive at what we expect. And there are several examples of that. Look, we saw a similar situation at the point in Gambia. Of course, it wasn't a military coup, but we had a president who didn't want to leave. So there was a maximum pressure, but there were also a, this pressure was going alongside with diplomatic engagement, and that was used, and, and we're able to address that. The situation with Mali, in Mali, there have been a lot of troubleshooting when the President Buhari actually made President Goodluck Jonathan as his emissary in that engagement. It's been a series of back and forth with, with, with Mali. And up to now, we still have that government, the military government there in Mali. Okay. So I, I think diplomacy requires a certain level of patience. It requires a certain level of doggedness and order to get it through. Right. In terms of the threat, yes, I think the threat is really because when you make some of those strategic threats, sometimes you don't also want to back up. But, but for me, my understanding of it is that governments of ECOWA or the other ECOWAS country uh, want to put certain level of maximum pressure to create a, a, a scene that will force uh, um, the, the, the military uh, pushes to actually withdraw. I, I, and I don't see that happening very quickly. At the end of the day, it is the poor, vulnerable citizens of Niger that will suffer, and the impact of their suffering will also affect most parts of northern Nigeria, particularly those areas that are bordering uh, with Niger, with Niger Republic. Right. So I, I think it, it, we need to be careful. And some of the sanctions, I don't know if like, hear, um, uh, like, like the electricity, right. for instance. Uh, we understand that this is, this is, this is a, this is a conversation.
this, this is a conversation that is ongoing. It's a work in progress, as you've uh, pointed out. And we do appreciate your insight on this one. And we hope to circle back to it as soon as we learn more. And there's a lot more to unpack. Thank you most kindly for your time and your insight on this conversation.